This video is going to be for those of you that have maybe tried self-development in the past, have tried to work on yourself and no matter what you seem to do, nothing makes any difference. And this has been the case for me for a long time. I've been in, I found self-development in my late teens, early twenties, and I'm 34 now. And, uh, and it has really been an uphill struggle to improve myself. And um, there's a lot of reasons why self-development is difficult. I think king of all of those reasons is that humans in general don't like change. And um, we, we like to remain how we are because change is threatening to, to our identities, to our egos, to our sense of who we are as individuals. Um, and it's, it's a funny thing because even though we can be aware that our behaviour or our thoughts or our actions are harmful to us in some way, we would rather continue to do them because they are familiar versus trying something new, which, yes, may be better for us, but it may also be worse for us. And, uh, and this sense of change is, is so difficult. So there's a myriad of reasons why. Um, but that is, is one of the main reasons, and I've always been conscious of that. But um, I kind of stumbled across something the other day while, while I was out on a run, just kind of thinking to myself, and it was this sense of a lot of why I find change so difficult, particularly at the moment, is kind of tied up with my ego. And um, the biggest change I'm trying to make at the moment is my um, my career, my um, my job. And for those of you that follow the channel, you'll know that I have worked in sales for a long time. And I could, if I wanted to, walk back into a well-paid sales position. I don't think I would find that difficult at all. And in fact, I'm actually going through an interview process at the moment for um, a very well-paid sales job. But it's... At the back of my mind, I know it's not something that I want to do. And um, what I realised was that I was comparing myself to or, or believing that I am a version of myself that doesn't exist. Um, and I say believing, I probably mean fantasising. I mean thinking that Admitting that my reality is what it is, is so painful to my ego that it is better to live in this imagined future and pretend that I am that person. Or to always hold on to this hope that I will one day become this person than to admit where I currently am and what I have to do to get where I want to be. And, um, and I think that's where self-development, true meaningful self-development has to start because we all want more money we all want more friends we all want more freedom all of those things but I think it's quite easy to go on to YouTube and see someone that's doing particularly well in, in a particular area maybe they're doing well financially or, or maybe they've got a great social life and then to project yourself onto them and to imagine yourself having those things and imagining how great it might be to have those things. But I think a lot of the time we don't actually stop to consider whether we really want those things and whether we're prepared to make the sacrifices. And so we can live in these fantasies that we will one day become this person, knowing full well that we're doing nothing to, to change or to take any steps toward that person. And so I kind of had this vague idea about the type of person that I, I wanted to be. I had this idea that I was successful from, from all angles. You know, I had a successful career and I was making good money and I had my own business and I have a great social life and I have a nice car, a nice house, a few motorbikes, all of those things. But... Um, what I'm starting to realise is that I don't necessarily want all of those things, but I want people to see me having them. 
And let me kind of explain a little bit about that, like what that means. I've met a lot of successful people in my life. Um, you know, working in sales for 10 years, you, you meet an awful lot of people. And I was always in awe, not necessarily of their achievements, but of what other people thought of their achievements. And a prime example of this is, um, is my brother and one of my brothers and I have to be really careful not to give too much information away here but he's very successful he's um he's he was or he is a partner in a um in, in a in a very large um, worldwide company he makes a lot of money and um I always grew up seeing how my parents held him in regard how they behaved when he was around it was respect and admiration and it was almost like when he was mentioned it was like they were talking about someone that was up here and I always saw that and realized or, or, or thought that I wanted that I wanted to be seen in that light and I can obviously only observe the world through my own lens and so as a kid I saw my brother doing really successfully in, in his career and I, I drew that link that actually I want that level of respect and self-esteem and and the fact that he's been held in such high regard by all his loved ones and as far as I can see that the only route to that is to have a successful career and of course as I got older and I, I understood more about mental health and all these kinds of things I realized that my brother had to make some serious sacrifices to get where he where he is and um, then I started to realize that actually maybe I wasn't prepared to make those sacrifices and that's when I think my my world started to crumble slightly because if I wasn't prepared or I didn't have the energy to make the sacrifices to have that level of success then I would never have that level of success and that wasn't the issue it wasn't the level it wasn't the fact that I wouldn't have that level of success it was what I thought that level of success brought with it which was respect and admiration and, and, and love from friends and family and so that's been a real blow to my whole self-development journey it's been a real change in how I see things and it's making me having to it's making me have to rebuild my entire idea of what self-development is and to really question what I really want and I think it's been so long since I've actually asked what I want what is important to me what I'm prepared to sacrifice and what I'm not prepared to and I, I've spent so long trying to be a version whatever version of me I can be that earns respect and, and love and admiration that I haven't really thought for a second about what, what I really want. And um, the more I'm becoming aware of this, the more I see people who don't give a shit. They just do what they want to do. And they are also getting the same level of respect and admiration and love that I want. But they're doing it in a completely different way. And it's kind of blowing my mind that you can get those same things from a completely different approach. It doesn't have to come from a career. There's, there's multiple ways to get things that you want. So what I'm starting now is, is trying to unpack that version of me that I wanted to be and to dig deeper into what the underlying meaning of those things were. So having a career what does that mean? What did that mean to me at the time? Well, it was having respect. It was having admiration. It was having financial stability. Okay, great. Well, what does financial stability mean? Um, and that means taking stock of my finances and working out how much I actually need to survive on a, on a monthly basis, how much I actually want to make and how much I need to make to live the kind of lifestyle that I want to live and realize that if I want to have a champagne lifestyle jet setting around the world, it's possible that I can have those things, but I have will, will have to sacrifice an awful lot of my free time, of my um, 
my relationships, there's all sorts of things I'd have to sacrifice to, to become that person. And do I really want to make those sacrifices? So if you're looking at this kind of like future version of yourself, maybe start to question like, what is the underlying principles that this, this person is, is, um, is displaying to you? And how can you, how can, is, is there an alternative way to get these things without having to bust your balls, without having to make yourself ill with anxiety and, and worry and to beat yourself up for not having those things? But um, but yeah. So what I've realised is that I'm I'm living as this version of I'm pretending that I'm this version of myself because it's easier to live in this fantasy of I'm going to be that person in the future than it is to admit where I currently am. And I feel like I've gone around a little bit in circles here. But the point being, this entire video is that for me at least, I have decided to quit a career in sales and I am now unemployed and it's it's like a dirty word I don't like admitting that I'm unemployed it feels like there's a lot of negative connotations around that but it is the truth and I've been so picky and choosy about the types of job that I wanted to do that I've been applying for and I realized that even if I was making a pound an hour, it would still be a substantial improvement on my current income. You know, I have like, I have a small rental property that brings me in a little bit of cash, but, um, but other than that, I'm not earning anything at the moment because I'm unemployed. And it's not easy to admit that to myself. Weirdly, it's easier to admit that to strangers on the internet than it is to admit it to myself but that is what I am struggling with at the moment so getting real with who I am where I am getting realistic about where I want to go and then realizing that whatever step I take next doesn't have to be one giant leap to the person I want to become as long as it is a step in the right direction and so even if I got a job flipping burgers in McDonald's it would be a vast improvement over where I am now and um, there's a whole lot of fear of judgment tied into this with me as well I it's a funny thing there's this kind of double standard that if any of my friends or family or even a complete stranger was in the same position I am and they went and got a job flipping burgers at McDonald's or cleaning toilets or one of those jobs that is typically seen as as um, lower paid and, and lower rank, I guess. If, if someone got one of those jobs that was in the position as me, I would have nothing but respect for that person and there would be no judgment on my part. And yet, when I think about having to do that for myself, all I believe is that everyone around me is going to be judging me. That I used to have this successful career in sales and now I'm flipping burgers in McDonald's and how I've kind of fallen from grace. And I'm having to really tamper my, my ego, having to confront my ego and realise that it was my ego that put me in a position where I was staying in sales despite the fact it was making me really unhappy just because I liked the money. And it wasn't even necessarily that I liked the money, it was that I liked other people thinking of me as successful. And this is something, it's my, my biggest challenge at the moment is getting over other people's, or, or my perception of other people's judgment of me. And I think a lot of us feel that. And I think that's why a lot of us spend money we shouldn't spend or do things we shouldn't do because we are trying to appear more impressive to other people and if there's anything I've learned from making these videos and from this channel it's that people do not like insincerity people do not like falseness and people can detect it I think people have got great bullshit detectors and you can feel 
when someone is being dishonest. You can feel when someone is protecting their ego and not being authentic with you. And you can also detect when you're not being authentic in yourself. But you have to spend a lot of time listening to get to that stage. And I think I have spent a lot of time listening. But yeah, if there's one thing I've learned from these videos, it's that people like authenticity. And I would rather have a friend that was scraping by, but that was honest and a good friend versus a guy that had everything that I think I wanted, but that was that had lied and cheated to get there. And of course, it's not to say that you can't find people in life that have really nice things, that have loads of money, that have worked hard to get there, that are um, good people, that are, are honest. And there are a lot of people that have got to that place in life because they are honest and authentic. I'm not saying that those two can't coexist, but I'm just saying if it was a choice between one or the other, I know what I would pick. So, um, so yeah, to loop back round, if you're struggling with self-development, if you are, if you've been trying to work on things and you kind of know the basics of why change is difficult, but there's this kind of underlying sense like you can't understand why things are so hard, why, why change has been so difficult for you in the past, maybe you are experiencing the same thing that I've experienced, that it's easier to live in a fantasy of a projected future version of you than to admit the reality of where you are and to be humble about the next step that you have to take in order to get to that version of you that, that you want. So, um, yeah, I feel like I've brambled a bit. I feel like in these videos I probably need to write some stuff down because there's a lot of videos I want to cover about why change is difficult and uh, setting goals and all that kind of stuff, but it all tends to get jumbled up when um, when I go on these these rants in these videos. But um, but yeah, I hope that the, the point came across and I hope you've found it useful. And if this is something you've experienced in your life before, if you've had to be humble if you've had to accept a position that you maybe believed was below you in some way then um then i'd love to hear from you and if you somehow managed to get over a fear of being judged by people um then i'd really like to hear from you as well so share in the comments as always and um yeah hopefully i will speak to you soon